to the Dean Vaughn Music Podcast Show, live out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Nevada. Open the door to Season 4. I have door 13. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to say. I tossed you tongues and walked Right here on the Dean Vaughn Music Podcast Show. Yeah. So we're going to bring door 13 in right now, and they're waiting in the waiting room, and here they are. How's it going, guys? Hey, Dean. How you doing, guys? Hey, everyone. Hello. <laughs> you guys we look awesome. Here. You guys look awesome out there. I love it. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. man. I, I love your a... background. Your background hey, is killer. Hey, it's, all, it's all about you guys, you know? Yeah. The show's all about you guys. <laughs> Un- unfortunately, yeah. Dean, that's our old drummer. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna shoot. Life. I'm gonna shoot Brian. I'm gonna shoot Brian. I I, <laughs> I I rely on him for every photo, and I should have ran it by you guys first. Oh no, yeah, I'm so know, sorry. You know what? Had had, I, had we been thinking, we we just got our new photos. What today? Yesterday? Yeah. Oh I, I man! I would have sent you a new. I didn't. I didn't realize that you needed like. I see what you did there. It looks really cool. And then there's that some random dude that we, who's no longer in the room there. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. That's okay. Um, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. But I'll, but I'll tell you what, when I uh, go into post-production, we'll switch that out for the real one. Nice. So, so when this, when this, when this thing hits uh, a million people in 105 countries, I'll have the right photo. I guarantee. It. Awesome. <laughs> we better hurry up. That's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but one of you guys send me that, send me that photo and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make those adjustments. Right. And I'll pick your favorite, favorite photo. We'll send it to Dean. There you go. I love the, we just yeah. got them done, but we'll get you one. No problem. Yeah. And I love your colors. You guys are a very colorful band. Does that go for your personalities as well? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> you should you should see what Gus does on his days off. Good Lord. <laughs> now, guys, is this also the wrong photo? This one here? Yeah. We, it's another uh, wrong photo. We, okay. Well, you they we, we we didn't have any right photos only because mm. We just okay. had the photo session with the with Bernal last Thursday, so we just uh-huh. got the the photos in for review. What yesterday. Yeah, yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, but those are good photos, though. Thanks for posting. Well, you know, I rely on Brian mostly. I don't like to bug the band unless I feel there's something wrong, and then I'll start to contact you guys and go, "Hey, yeah, this photo looks a little off," but. I really thought that was the right photo. And I kicked out the other photo that was just the three of you in that picture. Because okay. yeah. a lot of bands will send me photos and go, well, we lost our drummer, so we just kicked him out of the photo. <laughs> right. So I'm I'm dealing with three bodies, but I know there's a new drummer somewhere, you know. Anyway. I'm, I'm hidden behind them. So, like, the drummer, you don't see them that well. The drummers, you don't see them that well when they're performing. So I'm like. In the back in that photo, so I'm <laughs> there. You go, there you go. Yeah, so basically, what For you're now. saying, you're you're right where you I'll show up later. <laughs> I got, I got you. So I just got some old information. Um, I I have door thirteen consist of four members: Mercedes, and then it was Reed Cunningham on nope. drums. He's gone. That's yep, the one. Yep, it's no oh. Bernal. Say hi. Uh, Bernal, Hello. This Bernal. is yeah. This is the new drummer here. Bernal is the new drummer. I want everyone to know that, and all, everything will be changed out to reflect that. And welcome to the podcast show, Bernal. Oh, thank you so much, man. I'm, I'm, glad, you, oh, I'm so glad you guys could all make it. Um, you know, and I you're, appreciate you, know, you have such a cool voice. I mean, your voice sounds awesome. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you guys' <laughs> time. I really do appreciate your time on the show, and I respect your time. And I know you all have busy, busy schedules and lives, so. I really oh, we appreciate live it. for this. Are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do. We live for this stuff. <laughs> I'm going to start with Mercedes because she seems like she might be kind of the spokesman for the band. Oh, I don't know about that. Yep. Oh, so, yep. So she everyone... is 100%. <laughs> she is the spokesman for the band. <laughs> Usually the, the singers. I have the Usually... biggest mouth, maybe. <laughs> well, you guys have a couple music releases you just uh, came out with. Uh, uh, following Drowning was Notre Dame, correct? Is Notre Dame right? was first. That was Notre Dame was first. First single, and then uh, we just came out with Drowning, 
and okay. we got one in we got a new one in the hopper that's going to be coming out in a few weeks that's awesome now. Yeah, and I and I saw your that. stats. I think Drowning got like twenty five thousand views since February sixteen or something like that. Yeah, yes. the the, uh, the the music video has. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty nice job, nice job. So I don't know what you're doing right, but you're doing something right. And, yeah, and, well, we're working hard. Let me tell you, this is a lot. Of, <laughs> this is a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work, and it's yeah. it's little shows like this. We're going to play both videos tonight during the show. Cool. And uh, what we we're, and we're going to do a couple other things. We're going to go back into your history a little bit. I'm probably going to dig a little bit deep and find out where you guys came from, where you're from. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about, you know, your interests, your influences and all that stuff. So I'm probably going to, since I got Mercedes right there, I'm going to start with her. So how long have you been singing or when did you start in music and going back all to your childhood, uh, maybe in high school? And have you always been a singer? And how did you, and fast forward, and how did you get in with this band and, and heavy metal? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've always been a heavy metal fan. I, I ever, ever since I was really, really young, like Maiden and ACDC. And oh, like, yeah. You know, Judas Priest, they were all my favorites. Um, yeah. I was just kind of, I, my friends and I, we all listened to really heavy, heavy rock. Um, we, we used to, every Sunday night, we used to l listen to a show called Metal Shop. And uh, we were introduced, oh, there's the doggy. We were introduced <laughs> to all kinds of new metal. I mean, even back in the day, uh, you know, we were introduced to Venom and Slayer. And oh, yeah, I know Venom. Strike and, mm -hmm. you know, all those. All Badass those, you know. bands right there. Yeah, yeah. So um, I always, I did always sing. My mom was a singer, and um, I was blessed with uh, her pitch, her pitch you know, being on pitch. And so I kind of pursued that in high school choir and junior high, high school choir uh, in theater. And then I decided I wanted to become a drummer. And uh, I was a drummer <laughs> for 17 years, went wow. up to Los Angeles and was the first year um, in 1988, uh, I went to PIT, Percussion Institute. And it was the first year of VIT, Vocal Institute, Okay. And everybody that was there the first year, they 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 were all these people that wanted to learn how to sing, right? But oh, yeah. nobody really sing. They're there to learn. Was that like a GIT guitar? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Institute in, in Hollywood. I was seventeen, and um, this is the craziest thing. I probably performed more singing than I did drumming because drumming was like you know this thing I really had to work really hard you better at. watch out Bernal Lord Bernal go oh, yeah he's like I'm out yeah, of here the second he said that like I'm done bye he was another <laughs> drummer he just like he just quit <laughs> no. well shit you, you don't need a drummer I don't, I don't want to you don't, I don't need a fucking drummer I mean in, in the interview and yes I'm, I'm playing the drums for a drummer and I've heard that she was a killer uh, you know on the kit I was so, pretty good back in the day. I was pretty good. Well, don't make any mistakes, yeah. Bernal, because she's going to catch them. Oh, man. I know. I know that she's paying attention to every hit, every she's, note. So hey, I'm a drummer. I'm, I'm a like, singer drummer, too. And I oh, and I cool. say, if you can't play better than me, then get the fuck off the stage. Exactly, right, man. Right. Exactly. And, and so, it's, it's it's so, so I mean, amazing to play, you know, to, to her voice. It, it's just great. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, awesome. If she's not playing the drums, yeah. So Mercedes, so you play the little drums. Do you play any other instruments like the piano, guitar, all that stuff? Not really, no. No. Okay. Not at all. I, so you're you know, you're a singer songwriter, correct? Yep, yep, yep. And I I you know <clears> collaborate <throat> with people, and then I found well these guys actually I was in a in a in a real heavy metal uh, kind of like a new uh, they call it new metal band, and I was okay. playing with these two guys, Gus and Alec. Alec and Gus. Yeah. yeah. And um, badass, badass guys. Yeah, and and we became you know pretty close. And the next thing <laughs> you know, uh, that thing didn't work out, and we started writing together. And um, and how long how long have you been writing with these guys? So oh, far? about a year, maybe. Well, a year, holy smokes! Yeah, maybe a year, a little bit over a year. I so you guys are on the fast track right now. Yeah, I yeah. mean. We're a new band, you know? That's amazing, because I thought you guys were together for at least four, five, six years. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, no, no. Okay, no. so you're on the fast track. If you're getting like 25,000 hits on YouTube or whatever on a new song in a couple months, yeah. and and you have Drowning, and then you have uh, Notre Dame. Yep. Is that how you pronounce it? Notre Dame? Yeah, Notre Dame. Yeah. Okay. It's about, the, it's about the burning of the cathedral when it, when it caught on fire. 
but yeah, it it was it was about going there a couple of weeks after it burned down and just the emotional um uh like torture that I was seeing and smelling and and yeah. it, it was just su super emotional for me because I love I love the cathedral and the gothic, you know, architecture and um great so, place to shoot a video or something like that oh yeah yeah definitely <laughs> so that's the story of there you go of, of notre mm -hmm. dame just really seeing it for the first time after it it burned down and how horrible okay. it was and 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 the city's still repairing and yeah still, you know paris is still working well, towards mm -hmm. a, a, an opening hopefully this year sometimes your best songs are are you know they they raise emotion and uh, it's something either happened tragic in your life or exciting or something you'll never forget, yeah. you know, and you seem like that kind of songwriter where you grab something in life, a life event happens and you just take it and run with it and write a song about oh, it. Oh, it's, it's all, <laughs> it's all me. It's all, it's all emotion. That's all it is really, you know. Well, listen, I'm going to jump over before I lose these guys over here. I got Gusto and I've got Alec Peterson and the guitar player, correct? Correct. And you, I want to get to the guitar player because I'll tell you, that's the meat of the band right there. You know, the, now, are you the only guitar player? I am. Yes. Yes. And how long have you been playing the guitar? Um, well, I, I tell people six years. Um, <laughs> I know longer, only, right? <laughs> well, only because, um, I, I took like almost a 30 year uh, hiatus from playing guitar like a sabbatical or something. Yeah. Well, only, only, only because I had, a, you know, I had a family and kids and a career and, you know, there's just wasn't enough time you know, in my life to, to be in a band or play guitar. So gotcha. when, when, when I finally got to a point where my kids were um, uh, up, growing up and out of the house, um, I started picking it up again. And then we relocated to San Diego about six years ago and it gave it afforded me the opportunity to get back into music um, almost full time. So when I got here, I had to get reestablished because I came from the uh, the Bay Area prior to here. Okay, so I didn't know anybody, know any of the bands. I knew nothing. You were born and raised? Uh, no, 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 no. I've I've lived all over the country, um, but I was born and raised in uh, in Minnesota. Minnesota, mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. So uh, so six years here, I've been through the cover bands tribute bands and mm -hmm. then a, a few original bands but it really I, my love for writing music and then finding the the you know the, the right people to be able to start doing a good project together it's not it's not easy it never is you know how many bands have you been in uh, uh probably in the six years maybe eight to ten bands so a band um, a year <laughs> about you know, about i mean he plays because... all over the place we go and support him he plays in town all the time so he he plays while he's you're in this band you also play with other bands still i do yeah yeah oh that's awesome okay yeah yeah and you so guys what... support him you guys go down and support him yeah of course, oh, of yeah. course. Totally. That's awesome. totally yeah we're 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 all musicians um at, at the end of the day. You know, so yeah. We, yeah. we 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 do things musically. Gus plays in a reggae band, Mercedes has a nice Gus. Has, a, has a has a cult a cult tribute band, you know. It's uh -huh. we've been doing these things for so long that yeah. we finally got into this project and started writing and recording and then releasing and then you know, really trying to put a, a solid efforts into uh you know, you know establishing this band. Um, you know, we're still yeah. doing the things that we do, but really, now you, <clears throat> you guys are gigging. Um, I, I just, I noticed I caught on your, you have a gig coming up May 26th. It's on yes. a Sunday rock for autism music festival. And you go on at 6 PM. <laughs> and so now I did a lot. I've been in, I've been in, uh, three major rock bands. I was the lead singer for danger back in the eighties. Oh. I remember that band. I was the long haired guy. In fact, well, you know what? Because I, I saw oh somewhere gosh. on your, uh, I saw somewhere you guys said like, this is me, the blonde haired guy. No way. That's so cool. <laughs> I oh think I have God. a bunch of BAM magazines with you in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Band I'm the blonde haired guy, wow. guys. So don't get confused. It. And uh, really? <laughs> we should really have Merced, Mer Mercedes in her in her dining room where her wall of fame is because she has very similar photos posted just like that <laughs> too, from just the same like era. That. Yeah. Same well, no. Era. So, so then, so, that's right. You you have an amazing voice, and now it turns out that you were, you know, 
rock star back in the time. So that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, you know, and so I'm a musician that does podcast shows and I can relate to everything that you guys are talking about. Yeah. And I play all the instruments. I play drums. I play guitar. I play bass. I'm a singer and I, I do all my own recordings right here in my studio. Of course, when I want awesome lead guitars, I don't, I don't go there. I call someone, you know, I call, uh, in fact, I'll call Alec when I'm ready for guitar parts. <laughs> right. And if I want to kill her bass line, I'll call Gusto if I want to kill her bass line. So I just kind of hold down the fort, but I don't, I don't have that exceptional. And if I want to bring in exceptional, I'll just make a phone call. I'll call Carlos Cavazzo from Quiet Riot or something. Here's that, me right about that, that you, time. Oh, yeah. my God. That's so 80s right there. Yeah, <laughs> dude. This oh, is my so God. Weird. Yeah, That's yeah. <laughs> the hair. The freaking hair, man, you know? And my I hair was like, you know, hair. yeah. Well, hey, Alec Alec didn't sacrifice his hair. He's still got yeah. it. Yeah. I love Alec's hair. This, ha this, this hair like is a Peter Frampton over there, you know? This hair is a pro product of COVID. When back when we couldn't get our hair cut, I'm like, well, I guess I'm growing my hair again. There you Don't go. Don't ever cut it. Now my, yeah, now my wife won't let me cut it. She's like, you know, you can never cut your hair now, right? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Guys, this is the longest my hair has been. I, I had hair down to my ass, but I don't know if you can see it, but I'm hiding it. I'm hiding it. It's back there somewhere. Well, I, well, but, I but I want to grow it again. You know, I want to get that hair going, man. I I used to love long hair. And then if it, if I start losing it, I'm going to shave it. There you go. <laughs> can I, can I, can I'm going to be Gus over there. I'm going to have that mean ass goatee and I'm just going to yeah. shave it. Boom. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> Let me tell you. He's got the, a really good head. He's he does have a good head. head. He yeah. can wear it. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, everybody can wear it. Good, some people don't have good, you know, bald heads. You know, they're like the like you know on the Saturday Night Live, you had the cone heads. You, you know, some people got the cone head, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so sure funny guys. That <laughs> Gus, I'm just gonna fly over to you. I'm gonna kind of do a round robin. Gus, tell me okay. a little bit, a little bit about your history. When did you pick up the bass guitar, and, and is that the only instrument you ever played? And, uh, and tell me the whole rundown. Go ahead. Well, actually, no. I uh, started on um, the saxophone and flute, actually, and played in a bunch of orchestras and uh, stuff like that, San Diego orchestras, when I was a youngster. Wow. Um, and then uh, around uh, twelve years old, a hippie bass player came into the music class and started playing. And then for some reason, I looked behind him, me, and just looked at him and said, "I'm going to be so much better than you one day." And I don't know <laughs> what it was, but that's that was that was literally it. And I've been playing bass ever since. And that's I play, I dabble in guitar and a little bit of other things, but I'm primarily a bass player. Okay. So, and do you do any singing with the band? Uh, no, I, I try. I can try. Um, no, I'm not really a singer either. I, I'm just primarily a bass player. That's you just you just job. fit right there. Okay, I got you. <laughs> but I mean, I I do all kinds of things. I've played all types of music from punk rock to re obviously reggae, as they say. And then tomorrow night, I'm actually filling in with a uh, Sublime tribute act up in Long Beach. So I'm doing nice. that. So I've got Long sure Beach, man, they have so many bands down there. Right. And so reggae. I, sure I don't mess up the Eric Wilson thing since we're doing Sublime. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't fuck that up. Don't fuck that, that up. <laughs> That is so cool, man. And I love reggae. I just never been in a reggae band and I never played it. I mean, yeah. I've recorded a reggae thing, but, um, and tell me a little Long Beach going down there and play, you're playing tomorrow night, you said? Yeah, I sub sub sometimes with 40 Ounces to Freedom. They're a national touring act that does sublime tribute stuff. So every and now you, and, and then when he's, when he's got some West Coast gigs, he'll give me a call and I'll go, go fill in. Play some and it's all, is it all cover material? Or you do any uh, uh, originals? It's all covers and he'll, he'll throw in just things too from like the cranberries or yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll just throw chords at me on stage and next thing you know we're playing another song so it's it's, it's, it's interesting <laughs> and so when did you when did you get in door 13 and uh well they say you've been are you the original from a year ago yes i'm the original uh, the well besides them doing the uh, alec and recording the demos and doing all the bass himself uh i own a guitar repair business and nice alec came and i like i said i joined another band with alec and mercedes already we played one show Okay. It got really weird really quick, so that went away. And then <laughs> uh, we decided after about another six, eight months that they wanted me to come into the new project that they were doing. And I wanted to get back into re something heavy anyway. I've been playing reggae for the last 20, 25 years, so it's, I needed some more, you know. And, it and what, 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 um, I was going to say, what do you like to play the best, reggae or heavy metal? Hard to say. 
I had to think. You had to think about that I, one. I just, I just <laughs> like to play music. I, 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 I got gotcha. you. I just love to play. I'm the guy that'll go play a show for three hours, come home and practice for three hours. Okay, so, I'll, I'll throw you another one: reggae or jazz? Reggae. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's Guess, jazz? Yeah. What's <laughs> jazz? Yeah. Gus is a well well rounded guy, but you no, know, I, I I can see the talent. I can see the talent through yeah. the screen. You know, you guys all are very talented. I can tell. It's and then so there's awesome. Bernal. Bernal, oh, yeah, where? Bernal. Bernal, where did you get out? You're out of your car, Dan. What happened? What, what happened? Where are you? He drove home. I'm in the backyard now, so um, good to 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 go for the rest of the interview. Yeah. So um, it looks like you took a shower or something. Where? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Is your hair in a ponytail? I have it in days, actually. Thanks he's for reminding me. He's got a man bun on. You got a man bun going on? There yeah, you go. Uh, he's got some freaking hair back there. Okay, you're like me. I got it all. I got it all hidden. <laughs> we can't all be like you know, uh, Alec. You know, with the Peter Frampton look over there. You know. Yeah, that's a unique hairstyle for sure. That's he's got some beautiful right hair. There. I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so Bernal, I, I was yeah. over with I was over with Gus, but I saw you chime in. So I'm going to get you before you disappear on me again. No, no, I, I won't. I'll, I'll be here. Uh, that camera <laughs> thing was just like. Are you in your backyard? Where are you? Yeah, at? yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Where do you live? Where are you at? Chula Vista. Chula Vista. I know. Chula where that's Vista. At. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Right. Now, where do you guys? Where are you based? And where do you rehearse? Uh, we rehearse at Mercedes uh, Studio. At, okay. her, at her house, she described it as the middle of nowhere, the, the area. I'm not that familiar with, with San Diego because I just okay. moved in from Ohio like a year ago. Oh, nice. But that's where we that's where we practice, yeah. Uh, do, you guys, do you all have to drive far to get to rehearsal or just you all live down like the street? 25 minutes, 30 minutes or so, which is not bad, you know, in this big city. It's pretty yeah. – yeah, and I don't care. I mean, I've, I've driven – to practice with uh, other bands like two hours, three hours. When I was in, in the Midwest, I was living in, in a city um, called Tole uh, Toledo, Toledo. And then I had to drive like one hour and a half back and forth to to mm. play with this dude from Detroit. So I don't care. You don't care I, what? I don't care where I need to go. Because you're dedicated. Whatever you're, I need to go, man. <laughs> you're, dedic you're dedicated. You're dedicated rocker. Yeah, and, I, and, I am, and no, I love it. Serious musicians will drive as far as they they need to drive. Exactly, exactly. I, I'm out here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and um, oh, really? And I got a drummer that he said I'll come out there. It takes me three hours, but I'll be out there. You just call me and I'll come out. And I'm, it's I'm putting worth it, another, man. It's worth it, man. It's especially it. when we yeah, are when you especially when you have the chops, you know, when you get the good the talent, you know. Uh, you know, anyway, but Mercedes, your studio is right there. Where are you located? Yeah, the studio's in, uh, uh, I have a home studio in this house. And then I have a house that I'm working on right now that had a, a, a big, you know, jam room recording yeah. studio in there. So it's in La Mesa, California. So it's just east of San Diego. Okay. And, um, and then Alec drives the farthest. He's up in Escondido, so he's he's about forty five minutes holy away. Holy shit, Alec! But, you gotta go away. But this guy drives everywhere. I mean, the, he you know this is what he does. He's <laughs> lucky enough to just one hundred percent music, you know, and and uh, so I'm 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 shooting to get there hopefully soon, where I don't have to have a day job. But um, yeah, aren't we all right? Yeah, I mean, music, yeah, yeah, music yeah, man. You know exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, it's it's about time. <laughs> it's, it is about time, you know, and I feel like I've, uh, I've done so much and I, and the paycheck was never there, you know, the big paycheck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I have so many yeah. friends in the music business that are, you know, big time and, and they're struggling today, you know, after 30, 40 years in the music business and selling uh, platinum records and uh, touring all over the world, uh, sometimes two and three, they're still, they're still trying to figure it out and make some money in the music business. Yeah. It's not very re it's not very rewarding financially, yeah. In unless you're Metallica or you're somebody of that right, level, exactly. But it's kind of sad that they don't pay us, you know, what we deserve for our songs. You know, uh, you get a million downloads and you're lucky to get a few bucks, or you know, uh, you yeah, true, get, true, true. You need a million a day. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> well, well, you know, this band, the, the great thing about these guys, and 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 you know, Bernal having um, Bernal here too is like. We're we're feeling very international uh, now because Bernal is uh, is from Mexico, 
and um and we love mexico and we know that you know this this music is so popular mm -hmm. in mexico and south Absolutely. america and all that kind of stuff too so um now, we're gonna make a star you, out of bernal now you said something about i i glanced through your you kind of have like a bio but not it's like more like uh superficial bio because yeah. i didn't get i didn't get your birth dates <laughs> and i don't know where you're from you know it's funny i uh anyway let me get back so now you you said something about you didn't want to pin yourselves down to a genre it's tough you know so what what genre would you consider your music or does it does it uh drift across genres um that's always an interesting question because for me personally, I, I always like to have some, you know, some a fan or somebody listening to it kind of tell us, right? We're like, what do you think? Like, what do you think? What sort of genre? But <clears throat> to answer the question, I mean, we're a hard rock band. Um, yeah. I, I sometimes go, we're a radio friendly hard rock band, right? Because there can be a difference depending on what's, you know, what type of music you play. But there are so many genres now of yeah. what me growing up was like, Oh, this is rock. Oh, this is heavy metal. Now right. heavy metal has a thousand genres associated. With it. Good <laughs> Lord, there are so it. many genres. I get so confused, right? Yeah, yeah. I it's mean, like, come on, uh, pin it down. Power, power pop, hard rock. Power metal, <laughs> female fronted something. There's like, goth pop. There's a goth pop now. <laughs> oh, I know. It's goth it's metal. So crazy. Uh, what was it? Symphonic power metal. I just yeah, did. Night, right. I did Nightfall last week, and they were. It was symphonic oh. power metal. Yeah. Yep, symphonic yep. power metal, and then she said. The, the was it Jessica who sings for Nightfall? She said, "Yeah, and and I'm doing a single with my husband, and it's pop goth." And I and I go, "Did you just say pop goth?" <laughs> I, I just no don't, no, I don't she, no, and I thought she was joking. Uh, I go, "You said pop goth, okay?" Yeah, so I'm I'm trying okay. to I'm I'm trying to visualize that. Yeah, okay, because because like, okay. I, I, you know what you when you said that I all I see is Taylor Swift painted white with black <laughs> eyes, and you know what I mean. Like, I just don't even know what that is. Breath, you know? <laughs> So well, God, well, God, uh, Alec, <laughs> Gus, Alec, tell me more about the genres. And, you know, so back to I, I feel I I hear so many um, influences when I listen to you guys. Um, that I you hear tell a little us. Led, you tell Led, us. Led, Led Zeppelin. I hear a little Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, opening we, up. We've, we've gotten Led Zeppelin. We've gotten um, we've gotten King's X. There you go. Quite, quite a few times. Yeah. Um, and we've gotten somebody said Avenged Sevenfold at one point. It was yeah, there? I guess somebody said Avenged yep. Sevenfold. And loudness as well. Um, loudness. loudness is a weird yeah. one. Yeah. Well, one I mean, friend of mine told loudness. me that, that it sounded like like, it, like Alice in Chains, which was Alice surprising. in Chains. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, uh -huh. and then and then you know, like you like yourself, Dean. You've only, you're only able to hear two of our songs. When we right. play a lot, we play live. We have you know 10, 10 songs we typically play. So we get like, oh my God, that song was sound just like this or the King's X or whatever it is, um, which we all love because when these songs are created, a lot of times the song itself will be, here's like the idea. Here's the here's the main riff, here's the verse, here's the chorus, right. here's the bridge. And then everybody kind of puts their you know their little touches onto it, you know, that gives Well, you're fortunate to have Mercedes be able to sing. You know, when I, I was listening to one of your songs, and I, I what was it? Was it Anyway, but I thought it was, we have a singer that can't sing, so we're very holy funny. shit. You, you got an <laughs> oh, awesome, yeah. you got an awesome singer, and yeah. it, it sounded like a guy singing, but it, I knew it was her singing, but like a like a really good male singer, you're right, and I and that's not a that's that's a compliment because your yeah. voice is so versatile and your range, but you can yeah. get down and crunch and get a little bit grungy, right? And yeah. still scream at the same time, but be very melodic at the same time and, and very commercial, which sells albums. Yeah. But and your that, voice, and, and she your commands voice, the stage too. And she commands the stage. And I and I didn't see any of your live stuff. I'll probably watch oh, that. Oh, you got you well, we're gonna invite you out. You I'd love to come San out Diego anytime. Maybe I'll announce you on stage or something. Yeah, That'd be great. yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> we, got some, awesome. we got some shows coming up. <laughs> we, we 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 have yet to unleash the Mercedes Banshee Call of Death. She's she's got this this thing she mm -hmm. does. It's been a while since I've heard her do it. But when she wow. did it the first time, I was like, "What the fuck just came out of your mouth?" <laughs> <laughs> it's influenced by Ronnie James Dio. I oh have a yeah, Dio ah, really? Dio fan. So yeah, that's kind of one Whoa. of the, the things. And, I, and I'm that's guessing I'm guessing you have a powerful voice. You know, at the same time. 
like you can you can knock out some tweeters and in, in the PA system. I yeah, I hope so. Well, that was the biggest <laughs> thing, you know, being um, you know, starting at a young age in the music business and um, you know, always trying to, you know, prove yourself as one of the guys and that that was kind of one of my one of my things, you know, especially when I was in LA, um, uh playing in different bands and and being a drummer, it was kind of like, you know, you had to hit hard you had to play hard oh yeah and you you know what i mean and there's no room for like taylor girl. swift up there no room yeah, for no a, there was no play no like room for taylor no room for mariah yeah. carey they you know get those people off the stage because we need exactly. some balls exactly we, we got you know <laughs> so that, that was one that was one of the things for me is like you know um, <laughs> being a musician for so long is just yeah. like keeping up with the joneses and kind of you know you got to stick out you know? Well, and, and you guys are leading the way. Fuck keeping up with the Joneses. You guys are leading the way. You know what I'm saying? You know, you want to be your own, your own style, your own. Totally. Your, but your when own, I was younger, you know, it was like, yeah. I, I got to sing louder. I got to sing harder. <clears throat> I got to develop my voice, you know, right. I, I, a rock and roll voice. And that, right. and that really took some time, you know, to develop that style. And, um, and I, I have to, I have to thank Robbie plant for that, you know? Absolutely. Now, um, you know, and saying that uh, a good friend of mine was Jeff Tate, Queens Reich. And oh, we, yeah. we both, we both had the same vocal coach, Elizabeth Sabine. Uh huh. And her job was to strengthen our voice, not teach us how and to strengthen our voice, our diaphragm. Right. And, and Ron Keel, who was in Steeler was also. Yeah, I remember her. Ron for uh -huh. sure. Yep. Yeah. So me, me, Ron and Jeff were her lead pupils back in the eighties. Wow. And she would go and warm up Jeff Tate before every Queen's right concert. Yeah. Wow. He, didn't, he didn't go on stage unless she was there. Oh, she, I believe it. I believe she, it. De she, de she defected here from England and became Hollywood's heavy metal singer, vocal strengthening specialist. Nice. Yes. And yeah. she defected here. She passed away a couple years ago. Oh wow! But her name was Elizabeth okay. Sabine, man, and and yeah. and getting into back into vocals, you know, um, the power and the strength and being able to, you know, play three shows or six shows in a week, balls out, like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, the kind of singer that you are, mm -hmm. I, you sing full blown, you know, you're putting everything you got into it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the way I sing, you know, I put everything I got into it, yeah. And, and music's all about that, man. You know, you got to go out there and give it your 150%, and you know, and, and knock out. You know, nobody wants to hear anybody else after they listen to you. That's right. That's that's always always the plan. We we talked about this very early on. Is that we want to because once we've talked about once you are on the stage as a musician, you cease to become a musician and you become the entertainment. Right, because now you are there to entertain the people that came to see the show. Absolutely, right? they came to see a show. They can listen to your music in their car at home. <laughs> give them a show, like what? Give them something they they weren't expecting. Yeah, you know, get entertain them in whatever way that you possibly can. Yeah, they don't want to just go into a club and go. Well, I can see these guys on the corner of the street. I want to see a spectacular show. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, right. Whether it's the guitar player lights his hair on fire, he's coming out there, and he's you know he's got his. You know, when I had we were I was in danger and we uh, we had rocks and, and air aircraft landing lights and we had smoke coming out of the rocks like, it was, you know, the with the ribbon that said, you know, don't cross the line. Right. You know, the skull and crossbones. Caution tape. Caution tape. Yeah. And we had these uh, rocks all over the drum set. And then we had these lights coming out of the rocks and it was smoke everywhere. And just we had shit falling from the sky and, you know. And it was all about the show, man. Yeah. You know, people yeah. came to see the show. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you yeah, got right. to give them a show, man. You got to, you got, you got to stand out. You got to, you got to take them to a place. If they go, if this is a typical place they've been to before, like how can you create and take the same place and make it something unique, right? Something different. absolutely, absolutely. And, and you're, and I'm sure, and I'm guessing you guys know, you know, you 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 uh, participate. Your audience gets to participate with the band. Oh my um, lord, we have a whole song dedicated just to that. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and then they I get out in the thing. audience and and rile people up. You there know? you go. There you I, go. I have okay. no problem getting out in in there. And I, it just, it's, <laughs> I'm using this microphone. It's supposed to go up to like 250 feet, and I, 
I always find that I'm maybe 600 feet out. And I'll, <laughs> Damn it. I got to go back to the stage. You remind me so much of me when I was playing at the Roxy or Gazari's down on Sunset Strip back in the early 80s. I had a wireless mic and and um and the guys would take off on a song I wrote called Tramp in Black Leather. And uh and the song would start off right. And I look over at Mark and I go, I'll see you guys in about 20 minutes. <laughs> and, and the and they're waiting for me to they're waiting for me to go, okay, let's go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then the band would finally kick in. And those guys would be go, where the fuck did he go? And I'd be up on the top, you know, the top level, you know, hang. I'd sit down with the girls. Whose birthday is it today? <laughs> That's, <yeah. laughs> That's cool. It's your it. birthday. Man, you got some big tits. <laughs> funny, funny story. Um, Mercedes's nickname is uh, Tramp in Black Leather, which is weird that you mentioned oh, that. So. That is so funny. <laughs> wow. Okay, now you got to watch my that song. It's supposed it's... to be a secret. Come on now. Well, I used to whip. I had the girl that came out on stage. It's, it's all about the show, right. right? So I had the girl. It was the drummer's girlfriend. She let was, me let me preface. <laughs> Alec, this, this was girl, back in this is back in the eighties when we didn't give a shit. <laughs> this was this was yeah. This was in eighty one. We didn't give a shit. Yeah, exactly. And, and she came out on stage, and I whipped her. I had a whip and a. Oh my god! And, and, and she, he's and making she's, the sound of it. She's, that's, that's she's, down, she's, she's doing this right, and then, and then I'd come behind her and just boom, drop them. <laughs> and oh this is god. like the, the place is packed, and and people would come to see the show to see that kind of shit, the antics. Oh yeah. That, you know, um, yeah. And when you when you say it's about the show, it is, but it's also about the talent. And if the music sucks, well. Nobody really cares too much about the show. They're going to walk out anyway. Right, yeah. So, so the music has to be there, you know, and uh, and I know you guys have have what it takes to you know take this thing all the way through, you know, and do more albums and make it big. You just have to hang in there and do it. Oh yeah, you know? we're hanging in there. We're and we're enjoying it. I think this, you know, it, it's we're, uh, you know, you've been probably in a million bands too, you know, and it's I've just, been in about five or six, not in yeah. a lot of bands, yeah. Well, it's it's one of those things too that's really important for us for you know personality wise and getting you know and really liking each other. Like everybody in this band gets along really, really well. And that's important. Yeah. That's important. And it's a huge thing, I think, you know, at this age too, that we know how to communicate. And uh, I think we've called got maturity, right? Maturity for yeah. sure. I mean, the band is is definitely mature, you know, musician wise and you know, personality wise, which is awesome. So well, when you're locked in a studio for three, four hours, and I don't know how many days a week you guys practice, mm -hmm. but you become like family, right? Of course. You know, brothers yeah, and yeah. sisters and cousins and whatever. It's a second family for sure. You know, and yeah. if, you, if you can't get along, then at some point the whole thing is going to crash and burn. Yeah. <laughs> you can't let your emotions or your personality or your egos or all that bullshit get in the way um, because it does get, you know, imagine, the bands like the Rolling Stones, you know, uh, bands like that, Aerosmith, still together today. You know, a lot of these bands, how did they stay together for so many years? It did a lot of drugs. <laughs> a lot of drugs. But uh, but a lot of them crash and burn like Guns N' Roses. Yeah. You know, you got yeah. you got the axles of the world that just can't take it anymore, you know. And the yeah. guy drops out and fucks up a good thing, you know. That's it's really right. sad. It's really yeah, sad. It's, un it's, a, it's unfortunate, you know, but this um, – the this is a you know a marathon you know we 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 know things don't happen overnight so every day we're working towards a common goal you know and no and the reality is it, you know it, you start to pick up fans and you pick up some notoriety and you get little things here and there and that and we try to celebrate all the small things right because the small things are big deals for us you know absolutely it, it means the world to us if we like Mercedes got featured on a on a Facebook um you know female fronted band page just last week that has like 70,000 followers and they they seeked us out to say hey, I love your music and I want it's a little thing but to us it's like man that just means the freaking world yeah you know? it does that's somebody that we don't know happened to find our music and then asked us if we wouldn't mind being on their page as a feature that was really cool you know you know, and it's the little things that lead to the big things, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and every little thing leads to a big thing eventually. You just got to stay stay the course. 
um, this podcast. And you never show. know where the opportunities are. You never know mm-hmm. where the opportunity may lie, right? It could be anywhere, <laughs> anytime, anything, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I see Bernal down there, man. He's got the thumbs up going on. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to be okay Fingers with crossed. the <laughs> It's going to happen. Bernal. It's going to happen, man. I'm, I'm dead sure that this band is, is going to, you know, um, be in places that we don't even imagine at this moment. I'm I'm pretty sure of it. Well, you because guys are on your way. It's so so wide and it's so yeah. broad and it's so enjoyable and it's uh, it's heavy at the same time. Lyrics are you know yeah. pretty well written. It, and you got it, it, curtain it's call. Be, it's gonna it's gonna take off. Far and you away. got you got it's curtain exciting. call records behind you. I, yep. I talked to Mark. Uh, I mean Mark. <laughs> I talked to Brian more almost every night that crazy son of a bitch calls me like <laughs> he's up at midnight he's three hours ahead of me so it's like only like 10 9 or 10 o'clock right yeah and he, he calls me he goes man i want to talk to you man he goes i got these bands i got they're so great you know and they love your podcast show and, <laughs> and he, i know and he, that's awesome and, and we great. talk we talk for like two hours it's it's hilarious oh that's and, so cool and, and he's wow. fascinated by my stories because i'm telling him the old stories you know me and tommy lee are friends and i used to live uh well i used to go over and watch him play his drums all the time so cool. me and me and tom were went to the same uh, high school together and he always wants to hear these these stories you know that i was you know i met this guy and i met that guy and i <laughs> poison opened up for me you know all those kind of stories and uh, he goes, man, I'm so fascinated by the '80s, man. <laughs> wow. you know, I, go, I don't yeah, know. No. I don't. I don't know how old Brian is, but <laughs> um, he's a little younger. He's about in his forties, I think. Yeah, he's younger. He's he's yeah. he's way younger. But um, I was gonna say, you know, it would be great to chat about the old days because you know I was 17. I was up there in 1988. You know, so right there at the height. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, the Sunset Strip and. You know, I was in an all-female band called Boy Blue, and uh, Bill Gazzari would have us on every Tuesday <laughs> night because he yeah. just loved the girls in the band. Oh, he and loves the girls stuff. and the guys. He yeah, loves everybody. Right. Yeah, well, I feel um, like I, I feel like you and Dean may have actually crossed. crossed we probably have. Bridge, We've probably you know? been at the Rainbow or something. You know, <laughs> and I was born in '63, so I when I was 14, I started. I was playing in Hollywood at 15 years old. Yeah. Cool. And I was headlining the Roxy at 16. That's amazing. And my bandmates That's were all five years older than me. Yeah, yeah. So when I got in my, I just said, guys, we got to play Hollywood. I got to get out of this garage. And we went yeah. down and, and then we did a record and we did all that shit. Um, cool. But I was the youngest guy in the band by yeah. like five years. Right, right. And my so- same thing with me, <laughs> you know, because my first, my first gig at the Troubadour, um, uh, I was 17. I wasn't old enough to, you know, set up my drum kit. So they had me out in the back. Oh, you were a drummer. At yeah, the time. back then, you know. Oh, wow. So okay. I had some guy oh, funny. Have to help me set up my drum kit. <laughs> and I went in there and it was set up backwards. Oh, he, I have fans, a story. Like, I'm not going to tell my story about that because we'll be here all fucking night. Okay. Right. But anyways, we'll <laughs> right. have to, we'll have to right. reminisce. I want to do a, I want to do a round robin real quick. Now, I did this with, uh, with uh, the guy from Quiet Riot, you know, I did I, I did a round robin. They all had these spectacular things that happened in their music careers. And one of them was playing the uh, the 83 uh, festival, the Us Festival. Oh, wow. If you guys remember that. Wow. When Quiet, uh, when, remember when Quiet Riot played? Yes. <laughs> that was Carlos Cavazo's highlight. I interviewed him a couple weeks ago. Oh, I believe it. And he, I said, I, I, he just said, Us us festival 83 you know but anyway i want you guys to tell me and i'm going to start with alec and i want you to tell me the most spectacular time you had in music and just give me one event if you can yeah i i I have one event in mind is back in the in the like early to mid 90s i was playing i was living in uh, new jersey and i played in a band there and we had the we had the chance and we opened up for uh, Ace Fraley. Wow! So back when he was touring, yeah. that kind of. So I grew up like the band that got me interested in music was Kiss. So like <laughs> to be like even like in the same stage with right. Ace, like Ace Fraley for me at that. I mean, I was probably twenty three years old, you know, but I felt like I was you know 
10 years old. Cause I remember very young age, 10 years old, my dad took me and my brother to our very first concert and it was kiss like at 10 <laughs> years old. My dad, like, is like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I'm taking my kids to the show and my brother's eight and I'm 10 and just crazy shit's happening. And then 10 years later, or 12 years later, I'm opening up for Ace Fraley. And that was pretty amazing. You know what? And you're not the first one. You're not the first one to say Kiss was your <laughs> big event oh, yeah. in life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've heard that many times. And over here, Gus, give me give me uh, one of your big events in life and music. Uh, well, I was in a band called Thicker Than Thieves for many years around the 2000s. And they were Thicker, one of the Thicker Than Thieves, you said? Yeah. Yeah. They were one of the first uh, rock reggae bands with a horn section doing reggae type stuff. Nice. We all over California, Vegas, West Coast, everything. And uh, we ended up doing um, Southern uh, Humboldt Music Festival one year. A lot of, you know, a couple thousand people. And the producer that was with us, uh, he's a dread reggae Rasta full guy. And yeah. at the end of our gig, uh, he came up to me with a real famous Jamaican artist. And the, and the guy was like, hey, you had a great show and put his hand out and shook my hand. And then I was like, cool, right on. So after he walked away, the producer turned to me and he was like, you you do realize they don't shake white people's hands, right? And like, oh. <laughs> and it just, it just, they liked it just you, kind man. Of, it kind of blew my mind. I was, and when he, he was, he was like, he's like, you don't even understand the amount of respect that that man just gave you. And I was just like, whoa. Wow. Okay. So that, wow. yeah, that was, that was, that was a, a big one too. Yeah. And, and you know, I think it hit you emotionally too. You felt oh, respected. Yeah. You felt respected. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, re well recently yeah. I had a, uh, my, my other reggae band, we do, we do lovers rock reggae, like Gregory Isaac style. Oh, okay. Okay. Reggae. Recently a, a real popular reggae DJ at the end of one of our sets said, Hey man, for a punk rocker, you're pretty fucking Rasta. <laughs> so, out of my gravestone, you know what I mean? So. That's fucking awesome. And I'm coming down here to Bernal. 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 Um, see, I'm, hey there. I'm, st I I'm say still Bernal? waiting. Bernal. I'm okay. still waiting for that for that moment. Um, You're still waiting for that. You had to <laughs> in America. In America. Okay, give me a moment in your life. I don't care what country you were in. That, me, okay. Get, uh, like it could have been a backyard party. I don't care. Give, oh, me, okay, a big, okay. give me a big moment. Well, I we opened. I was in a band uh, when I was seventeen, and we opened for this um, rock band that's probably the most influential Latin American contemporary rock um, uh, lineup. And, okay. And the name is Café Tacuba. So Say I that was, again. Was, whoa, whoa, whoa! Say that again. Café Tacuba. Café Tacuba. Like oh, it, I almost it, said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and I, and I don't better. Go ahead. People that listen to your show, like some of them will know them because they're they're big. They're very big. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So gotcha. so there was this festival in my hometown, and uh, they decided like that my band would you know open for them, and it was like I was in front of probably four thousand people, going completely crazy because they were waiting oh, for the other God. band. That's a lot of people, they man. Were, they were destroying us because Mexican audiences, when they don't know the bands, it's just like a carnage, you know? <laughs> but, but I played perfectly well. I nailed it. I wasn't scared. And uh, You were a rock star. You were a rock star. I think I think that that's been one of the most uh, decisive moments uh, in my life as a musician because, you know, I could hold the sticks for the entire set in front of an army of you know, yeah. uh, hardcore fans of this huge, huge um, rock and, stars. And you don't get yeah, stage fright? Yeah, that was 90-something. 90, 90 I don't, rem I don't yeah. remember. Do you, ever, do you ever get stage fright when you go on stage? Do you ever get nervous? I, I, I get everything when I go on stage. <laughs> everything. Every every feeling that, that a human body can, you know, experience, it's uh, there. It's fear, joy, yeah. Um you know, I, you know, I'm I'm laughing because we all get nervous. Everyone gets nervous. Yep. And that's and I was not. Thinking, you know, yeah. I was thinking yesterday. I was thinking yesterday. I'm gonna get very nervous if I don't get nervous when, when I when I'm in the play. Well, that's that some good drugs. Like when that's when you're on some wrong. good drugs. <laughs> that's some good something, drugs when you're not nervous, right? Yeah, something exactly. is wrong if you're not nervous when you're up there because I don't know. You have to feel that first kick. Yeah, so yeah, afterwards, yeah, yeah. Fly. You need that thing to push yeah. you. In get the butterflies. By, they used to call that the butterflies. Right yeah. Right. All right, Mercedes, your turn. Uh, I think one of the, I, I love the, uh, you know, uh, Alex. I I got my 
first Kiss albums at a at a, a swap meet, and then um, and I fell in love. Wow. With him. But one of the uh, what year would that have been? I'm just oh curious. Gosh, I was eight, so um, you were eight. <laughs> yeah, Love Gun yeah. Tour. I think it was um, one of the early then, Kiss albums. No. Yeah, and then um, my one of my really good friends in in elementary school he loved kiss and so every halloween we'd all dress up like kiss and one year i was in like a um like a like a uh, hell yeah bandex you know and yeah. did the paul stanley thing or oh whatever. yeah i was peter chris <laughs> yeah you know, that's awesome and, <laughs> <Right> uh, <Bernard. laughs> and uh we actually got to see that tour and um my my friend's mom was the teacher's uh assistant so my mom and dad let her take us to go see the love gun tour in san diego nice. um, at the sports arena and wow. uh, they had these army tanks you know with blowing up the stuff you know oh wow it, that, it's just i think that that was just like the turning point of like oh my god this is like amazing and, and you <laughs> said i'm gonna be on the stage one day yeah and, and i'm gonna put oh, yeah. on that kind of show yeah i you know? i didn't i didn't really act i don't think i thought about it then um yeah, when yeah. i was four, well four, you were eight right <laughs> yeah i was eight but when i was 14 <laughs> okay. i i was visiting my dad he had moved to um england uh, to London and was and and uh, took me to a Bark of the Moon tour for Ozzy Osbourne at the Hammersmith Odeon. Wow, nice, and nice, um, nice, nice. that was incredible. Mm. He, he had like fifth row, and my dad and I were just sitting there. And he took me to like five concerts: Eliminator tour. He took me to the Arrhythmics first first show. He took me to. Um, uh, um, there he is. He looking yeah, good, better I'm, looking I'm good. I'm telling you, I, it was my dad that really was like, "Okay, I got to take my daughter, you know, to these shows." So, you hey know, guys, I almost forgot. We got to play your videos. Okay, um, cool. Now, who yes. wants who wants to announce the first video? And I'm going to let you pick it. So you you tell me, Mercedes, uh, you pick the video, and then you tell me who you want to announce it. If it's not yourself, go ahead. Uh, I'll pick the video of. Um, Drowning, and I'll Drowning. Have, and I'll have Alec introduce it. Oh, okay, so Alec, you <laughs> you are named the introduction. Uh, you're going to introduce Drowning, and I'll go ahead and take it from here. Go ahead. Hey, everybody, this is Alec with the band Door Thirteen, and you are about to watch our music video for our song Drowning.
Welcome back to the Dean Vaughn Music Podcast Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we just heard Drowning by Door 13. And we're going to hear a little bit from Alec about how that song was written and what it's about. Go ahead, Alec. Well, thank you, Dean. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drowning was actually uh, uh, one of our very first songs that uh, that we put together, that along with the other single, Notre Dame. Um, and that, those are both written about the same time. Uh, me and a prior band member um, started working on these two songs. And uh, it's just like anything else, right? You kind of have this idea, you put it out there, you, you record it. The beauty of, of this day and age is that we're able to, to do all our recordings from home. You can put up, put, do drums, you can do guitars and kind of bounce ideas back and forth by file sharing. And this all happened right at the end of COVID. You know, so most of what we were doing was sharing files and putting ideas together. Gotcha. And finally started getting back into the music thing again when I met Gus and I met Mercedes. And Mercedes, like, as soon as I heard her voice, I'm like, she is perfect for this. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> and funny story, the first time I asked her, she's like, nah, I, I'm too busy doing other stuff. <laughs> <She tells me. laughs> well, the first time I asked her, I'm like, okay, cool. And then some months went by and uh, that project fell apart, obviously. And uh, I'm like, hey, here's the stuff. What do you think? And we gave her maybe five songs, and Drowning was one of them. Okay. I think Drowning might have been the first one that you got back to us. Yeah, I think um, so. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that, that was the one that got 25,000 views. Isn't that insane? As of oh February 16th, 2024. That just came out. Awesome. We were just we were just so blown away, honestly. I mean, she she's sitting in her home studio right now, and we don't see she's got all the recording equipment and things right in front of her. That's um, awesome. We just throw the track on there, and then she spits out a bunch of ideas, and and she says, okay, here's what I got, and she'll send like a sample, and then okay, send me over the tracks, and I'll put them together, and we'll do a quick mix. And I'm like, holy shit! Like she got the harmonies, and there's melody, and there's all these things happening, and like these vocalizing stuff, and I'm like just blown away, you know. And then she and then. All of a sudden, she's like kicking out one after the other. Like we got oh, one song, two songs, three songs. Like before you know, we have five songs. Wow, wow, just completed. So, Alec, Alec, who's on that album, or who is on Drowning? Who's playing on it? Is it is the band we have tonight? Um, yes, Gus is on there. I'm on there. Mercedes is on there. There's one former band member um, who is also on there. Um, he's obviously not here tonight. Um, and then a drummer who we originally had in the project that just couldn't commit. So that's, okay. And Gus, what was it like doing that video or doing that, you know, doing that song? Uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, this was getting to do this material after not playing this type of heavy music for so long was so just energizing for me because this is what I grew up on Iron Maiden. I grew up on Thrash Metal. I grew go. up on Anthrax. I grew up on, you know, that's, that's the stuff that I grew up on. That, to me, that's the stuff I love. Gotcha. So, to get this back in my life and with the talent level that these people have was just something I could not say no to it. Was, I, I had to get involved just because I, I just love playing music so much that, that would you, would you say, someplace. would you say door 13 was kind of a step up in your music career? As far as the original um, music playing original and being in a heavy I've, I've, I've pretty much always done original. Okay. okay. Of the bands yeah, I've yeah. Been, in been original, but to do it at a, professional level for a reason yeah was yeah, something yeah. different and, and absolutely and something i greatly appreciate the opportunity to have and mercedes a little bit about drowning and then we, I'll, we're going to go on and do the next video back to back since i took so much time in this yeah. podcast so give me a little bit more about the song drowning and then we're going to have somebody announce um notre dame okay cool um so drowning um is uh there's a lot of metaphors in here. I think anybody could kind of <clears throat> listen to this song and, and be able to identify certain feelings and emotions of being constricted or being held down or, you know, right. your head down underneath the water where you're like trying and trying and trying and, right. um, and, uh, you finally get to the point where, you know, you're done. And, right. um, I think that was, uh, you know, I was in a relationship where it was just feeling really constricted and, um, and, uh, it's, you know, basically kind of out of my own, um, efforts of reaching out to, 
um, my friends and family and getting support of, you know, this obviously isn't the right thing for me. This is too constrictive. This is like you're being held down. Um, and so, um, you know, and most of my, I, I have a lot of girlfriends, but I, I do have a lot of guy friends just because being a musician and being in bands, yeah. and being really close to people that <laughs> Absolutely. I felt, I felt, um, that I had reached out to a few guy friends and I was like, Oh, you know, like I'm your sister, man. <laughs> like I, I need some help here. <laughs> like how, how, you know, how can I get through this? And, and the perspective of a woman's perspective, um, but, but also kind of like um, where if you don't persevere and you don't get out of, you know, this kind of restriction that there's no growth, you know? Right. And um, so it's, it's the song. So it was, sounds like the song was a bit personal for you. It, all the songs are very personal. Yeah, yeah. Every single one of these songs that I've ever written in this band is super, super personal. Um, mm. uh, and it's interesting because you sing the song and you remember the emotions or you remember, you know, what sparked that the lyric or what sparked or what that song was about. And um, for me, it's, it's always been that kind of journey of, of, you know, especially performing it. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the constant yeah. reminder and, and some things you don't want to remember as much. Sometimes they're not, you know, as easy, but, um, I think also, you know, a lot of these songs, uh, you know, and, and with anyways, if you want to talk to Notre Dame later, but, um, uh, you know, with our new song now, um, this the whole song is really like an affirmation the song now that's gotcha. coming out um in may so yeah it's very very personal and um but that's what gives it you know that's what gives it the guts and the glory of singing something where you're just like yeah you know I, i'm going down but you're but I, I, <laughs> you're you're not you're not i'm not gonna die with a lot of passion, I mean? with a lot of passion in that yeah, song. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, let's move on to Notre Dame. And who would you like to have announced that video, that music video right now? Now, Where your did, point, you're, over, are you pointing at Bernard? 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 Wait, Bernard? Yeah. Where's Gus? Gus is right here on my <laughs> yeah. screen. Gus no, is on your side. Gus. No, okay. Gus is over here. My Gus, screen is different. Why don't different. you introduce uh, Door 13? Gus, no, Gusto? No, no, I mean, I'm on. sorry, Notre is Dame. It, is it Gus, Gusto Kendrick? Is that is that? Uh, my name is Gus Kendrick, but Gusto is sort of the sage kind of thing. Okay, Gusto, you're on the spot. You're going to announce this next song, Notre Dame. You take it from here. Go ahead. All right. What's up, everybody? This is Gusto from Door 13. You're about to hear our first single, Notre Dame. Please enjoy this one. Enjoy, guys.
Welcome back to the Dean Von Music Podcast Show. We just listened to Notre Dame by Door 13. And we're going to talk a little bit about that song right now, Mercedes. Uh, what was that song all about? Well, it's uh, about the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral in Paris. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be visiting Paris a couple weeks after the um, the fire. And uh, as soon as I got there, I was visiting some friends and um, I actually went to surprise a friend of mine um, for her birthday and uh, just just so happened to show up there, which was pretty fun, uh, but went to um, to go see the cathedral and was overwhelmed by the smell and by the burnt black. Burning, yeah the the you know the darkness that's usually yeah. not there you know it's usually the yeah. cathedral's lit up and there's a lot of life and there was nothing around and I had a bottle of wine and and uh, sat next to the um, the river there and um, really kind of wept I, I mean it was it was so it hit you emotionally it, hit you emotionally. it was so amazing. Yeah. Uh, like the devastation and to watch, you know, the city um, be so connected to um, an architectural, you know, Gothic uh, cathedral um, and the devastation of what, what it meant for, so, what it means, what Notre Dame means to so many people. Right. And, um, and it was heartbreaking heartbreaking mm. i mean i watched it burn on the news and i kept watching it over and over again and mm. and uh just so happened to be there and um so uh you know the original supposedly the original crown of thorns was buried um uh underneath notre dame there and um and so you can kind of see in the video some of the images yeah. that really kind of talk about you know the the sorrow and and yeah. Uh, anguish uh that 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 so many people uh were affected by that so it was a very um, cool video very cool yeah, video. yeah yeah it turned out pretty good you guys did a nice job on that yeah thank you thank you, yeah. thank you. Well, tell, tell me what's the direction right now of the band uh and we're going to start moving forward now and i know you got a couple gigs coming up may 26 and then one in april but what do you want your fans to know about the future of door 13 and what can they look out for in the next, let's say three to six months? Uh, well, I can tell you, we, uh, we just had a, a, a meeting this afternoon and we put together our uh, song release schedule. Okay. Um, so we have uh, another three, three song, three or four songs that we plan to release b uh, before the end of the year. Nice. Um, so we're trying to stick to about a two month time frame between each song. Um, okay. So by the end of the year, we should have another, we should have a total of six songs, maybe seven uh, as part of our catalog up on Spotify, Apple Music, all those platforms. Um, so we're super excited about that. And as you know, as a musician, you know, getting a song prepared and recorded, yeah. mixed and all that, and come up with artwork and maybe a video. I mean, each one of those is its own, you know, just mountain to climb. It's a lot of work. It's yeah, a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, and so, to do it to do it right, it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah exactly. We do yeah. everything our own. I mean, we are a DIY. All Trust me, I, I know all about that, right? <laughs> everything you see on the Dean Vaughn podcast show is all me. Yeah, it's exactly. a lot of work, so, man. And, be, and, and because we're we're still a relatively new band, um, you know, we're still developing the brand, you know, getting the brand out there. You know, getting, absolutely. Now, are you going to be some put, awareness? Yeah, no, I, I got you. And yeah. um, you guys have a message also, uh, you know, a pretty positive one at that. And uh, also, now the songs, are, are you going to eventually put out an EP or an album, put the songs together, and then drop an album or an EP? We, we've we actually talked about that. Um, I think for us as a new artist, the smart move is to release singles. One Keep the time. singles going. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that doesn't mean eventually we wouldn't be like, hey, let's compile them all and yeah. here's an EP or an album. I mean, that's certainly right. something worth right. considering. Um, but, we, but again, because we're still building, you know, up uh, the brand and developing a fan base, um, you know, we want to be able to not necessarily spoon feed, but like, 
give them a little bit of time, keep them coming back for more. Absolutely. Uh, just, just, yeah. just blowing our wad in one shot. And here's a, here's a 10 song album that people will listen to once and maybe then they'll, they'll forget about us, you know, yeah. and, and times do, have changed. Yeah. 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 And we do look at them as a, you know, a body of that, that is the body of work, right. You know, so each song, um, mm -hmm. so we're not feeling like, oh, we got to write a song because we need five songs for anything. Right. Right. You know? Right. It, Absolutely. It's, it's mostly the songs are coming naturally and very organically and writing and creating around those songs and not being rushed to to be like okay we have to do this we have to do that but um boy how but things so have far. changed right you know back yeah, to the so Beatles so album good. you had to listen to yeah. the entire album to like one song remember? right you yeah. know you you would have to buy the whole album you know, tower records and licorice pizza and all those <laughs> And, and you would go, God, I only really wanted one song, but you got to pay the $14. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Times have changed, man. It's like a, they really what, have. what it's like a smorgasbord or what they call that a la carte. I just want that one song, you yeah. know, and yeah. I understand. It's and all about, it's all about playlists now. Like, you, absolutely. You, you have to be on a playlist, right? That's what it well, is. You, you guys are on a roll for sure. And, uh, and I hope you keep, keep that role rolling. You know, and uh, Curtain Call Records is behind you 100%. Those oh, guys are yeah. great. And uh, <laughs> and I'm going to start wrapping up. So I want you guys yeah. to um, I want you guys to know that I'm always here. If you guys want to do a follow up and you start to go on tour, or you want me to come and announce a, a show, yeah, just give, me, just give me a call. I'll come on out. Or if there's <laughs> any shows out there, I mean, you know, we're we're it's only a four and a half, five hour drive. So, you know, yeah, yeah. If you got any shows coming up that you guys need a band, you know, we'll we'll come right out. Absolutely. I, uh, I lived in Vegas for 12 years, Dean. Where where whereabouts in Vegas are you? I'm just on the outskirts, um over by Henderson, actually. Okay, okay. Yeah. I lived in the Summerlin area, but uh I still oh, I have a lot of I still have a lot of friends out there and um uh, there's a few clubs that I know some of the people that work there. And I saw a new club opened up, if you know, called the Sin Wave. Have you heard of that club? I, yeah, I've seen Sin Wave. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's down in the arts district. Um, there's also Vamps. Oh, yeah, I love Vamps. I love Vamps. I played there a couple times. That There's mm -hmm. such great people there. Oh, my God. It's an amazing place. I can't remember the owner, but he's uh, he's a famous guy, the owner. Yeah. And he's, and he's had it. And uh Carlos Cavazo from Quiet Riot, uh, he wants me to come down and announce the Freak Show band. He says, Dean, <laughs> I want you to come down and announce us at Vamps. Because Stet, you know, Stet Howland from, from Wasp, uh, he's the drummer for Freak Show. He's a super nice guy if you ever get to meet him. And I really like I really like that band. Ronnie Borshert, the lead singer. I haven't Freak. seen I haven't seen them yet, so I'm going to check them out. You have to check them out. Uh, they have two songs, Shine. And uh, they have a couple really good songs. And Ronnie was in Freak Show, the original Freak Show, where they wore clown makeup. They wore white makeup. And it was the Freak Show, you know. And then uh, they picked up Greg Chason from Badlands. You guys know Oh, Badlands. oh yeah. yes. Loved that yeah. band. I was so my, my, my interview Greg. was Greg, Carlos, oh, Ronnie. Yeah. And Ronnie. It was a great interview. Yeah. Because uh, I had to interview legends man i'm talking to these i'd like oh my god where do i start right yeah and, you know this is going to be a 10-hour interview and oh i had to break god. it down it was really fun talking about all their highlights you know I yeah did one, you for know, sure you know um and uh they talk, did they talk about ray at all because i was a huge ray G gillen fan ray gillen yeah we did talk about ray gillen we also talked about randy rhodes okay cool we also talked about you know back when uh carlos was in rat yeah, Carlos right. was the guitar player for Rat. Then he got in Quiet Riot, and wow. and uh, and he, and when uh, Randy Rhodes disappeared, Carlos stepped in, and then he played with Frankie Benelli. That's right. And, and Kevin DeBrow. and we talk about how they didn't get along very well. Oh right? well, I have to go back and listen to that for you sure. You guys got to watch the podcast show. It's really yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we talk yeah. about Frankie Benelli was a real freaking you know pain in the ass. Him, him and Kevin, you know, the money, the, the success just went to their head and Carlos yeah. wasn't happy. Yeah. Carlos was Carlos not happy. Carlos is the sweetest guy he ever. He is the nicest freaking guy oh. you'll ever meet. Sweet. Oh, I love that guy. Here's yeah. something interesting and ironic. Uh, the, actually, you mentioned Freak Show. The band that Alex, me and Mercedes met in was actually called Freak Show as well here. In <laughs> <laughs> well, we got Tramp and Black Leather and now we got Freak Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's an interesting thing. Well, we we are definitely um, uh, looking towards Las Vegas to play some some live shows. Uh, so I'm gonna start reaching out there soon. But uh, yeah, if you know anybody, then you you know, you know of a gig, hit us up, man. I, I will, I will, because I know you guys will kick some ass out here. Um, now, everybody out there, you can find Door Thirteen on YouTube, YouTube.com at Door Thirteen Band. They have a link tree. It's called Door Thirteen, and they're also on Facebook, Facebook.com Door Thirteen Rocks. And they have an Instagram page out there. It's also Instagram.com door door underscore 13 underscore band. <laughs> and they have a TikTok. And it's TikTok.com at door underscore 13 underscore band. Question mark underscore. Whoa, that is good. Just one good Lord. <laughs> anyway, you, you, you guys get the drift. You could find door 13. Just Google Woo. search them. And you will find all their videos, all their albums. And, and, and do me a favor. Support the band. Uh, download or buy buy their merchandise yeah. send the money to the band okay because yeah. we're not making we're not making much money off of uh, spotify and pandora and all these different streaming sites so if you can support the band and i'm telling you that because i'm a musician and and i have a website and i have albums for sale i want you to come to my website and give me the money <laughs> Dean, so, you're so awesome so go to yeah. door 13 and, and watch their live shows that's the big thing go to their go see their live shows and and if they're come to your town go support them because they are badass and they, Woo! Keep, Woo! they are thank badass you. so guys <laughs> i want to thank i want to thank you guys all for for uh doing the dean vaughn music podcast show here in las vegas and from the bottom of my heart i want to thank you guys for showing up tonight Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. It's so good. It's awesome. Pleasure, man. Right on, man. You too, brother. I'll see you guys later. And thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.